Brothers and sisters, the purpose of these lectures is not to attack groups or certain personalities, not to offend people. The purpose is a purpose of educating people about the deen that Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala sent to the Holy Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, and then the Holy Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, preached to the Sahaba. Then this deen was carried from the time of the Salaf to following generations and it reached us to educate people about the deen. When we look into our rich Islamic history of scholars, one of the things we should be aware of is this human aspect of the great scholars of the past. They were not ma'asum, they were not infallible that they couldn't commit mistake. They were humans and at times even great scholars in our history uh, wrote certain things and made certain statements which did not conform to the true teachings of the Quran and Sunnah. And then scholars in their times and in subsequent generations, scholars pointed these things out and critically analyzed the works of previous scholars. Then we find in our Islamic history certain scholars who became extremely controversial in their times. And amongst these type of scholars, the scholar who is probably the most controversial scholar in our history, in his time, and not only in his time till today, the most controversial scholar is Ibn Taymiyyah. There is no doubt about this. Now, coming back to this concept, the human aspect, he was a human. He was not an angel and he made mistakes and scholars in his time and in following times even till today in every generation from his time scholars made the masses aware of certain mistakes he committed he wrote in his books he said in his lifetime made people aware of these mistakes and brought people back to the true way of the Holy Prophet والسلام, and the true way of the Salaf. Unfortunately, sometimes we observe in the time we live in certain speakers who blindly follow Ibn Taymiyyah, who somehow think that he is infallible, who sometimes ignore the great critical works of great scholars and muhaddisun and fuqaha in the centuries after Ibn Taymiyyah's time, completely ignore what they said. Now, highlighting some of these things is very important in order to understand that even great scholars can and have committed mistakes. Ibn Taymiyyah, one of his grave mistakes is specific comments he made and that are recorded in his books relating to one of the great companions of the Holy Prophet And in relation to the Holy Prophet he was so close that he was the brother of Ummul Mu'mineen Sayyida Hafsa radiallahu ta'ala anha. And this is the companion Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. Great companion. Just before I go on to mention what Ibn Taymiyyah exactly said, which was rejected by scholars in his time and in generations after his time, these sorts of statements were rejected. These were conclusions he came to, not following anyone before him. And remember, like I said, he made mistakes. 
And unfortunately, there's people in today's uh, time we live in who think he can't make mistakes and follow him in a way that even Ibn Taymiyyah's direct students didn't follow Ibn Taymiyyah. Shamsuddin al-Zahabi Ibn Taymiyyah students pick up his works, his seer, his Tazkiratul Hufaz, where he's mentioned the biography of Ibn Taymiyyah. He clearly states, in Farada be Masail, there are certain Masail where Ibn Taymiyyah is munfarid. No one before Ibn Taymiyyah said those Masail, came to those conclusions. And then his student, Zahabi, who mentions these things in the biographies of Ibn Taymiyyah and then prays for his forgiveness also, that may Allah forgive our Shaykh Ibn Taymiyyah for these Masail that he mentioned. Even his students knew that he had made mistakes. This is why he became so controversial in his time. Now, before I go on to what Ibn Taymiyyah has actually mentioned relating to this great Sahabi, what I want to do is mention some statements uh, from one of his students, Ibn Kathir, about this aspect that I'm going to touch upon relating to uh, this great companion. In Al Bidaya wa Nihaya, Ibn Kathir, in the biography of Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, he mentions a lot of things. But what I want to focus on is that aspect which Ibn Taymiyyah has mentioned and then come to an incorrect uh, conclusion. He used his aql. No narration of previous scholars. He used his own aql. And sometimes there's people who follow him who have a problem when followers of Imam Abu Hassan al-Ashari or Imam Maturidi, they use their aql. They say these people prefer the aql over the, the naql. Ibn Taymiyyah used his aql also and came to a wrong conclusion. What was the way of Abdullah ibn Umar? Ibn Kasir mentions that Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma was recognized in his time for this act. Kana yatatabba'u athara rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Kulla makanin salla fihe au qa'ada fihe. That Abdullah ibn Umar, he used to do what? Tatabbu'u. Tatabbu'u in the Arabic language means to repeatedly pursue something. Repeatedly pursue something. To make repeated endeavors to reach something. What did he used to do tatabbu of? Athara Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Literally it means the tracks of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Athar refers to here the memories Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhumah had that the Holy Prophet والسلام, was on a journey and he stopped in this specific place and he prayed here. Abdullah ibn Umar ta'ala would make repeated efforts to go to that specific place to go and pray. Then Ibn Kasir says, this tatabbo reached such an extent that Abdullah ibn Umar reached an extent that inna nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nazala tahta shajaratin faqan ibn umara yata'ahaduha that if the holy prophet alayhi salatu wa salam in his lifetime had uh, rested beneath a tree descended and sat beneath a specific tree abdullah ibn umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma yata'ahaduha that tree Abdullah ibn Umar, Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma would return to it frequently, that tree. fi ma hatta la bas. And he would, the roots of that tree, he would pour uh, water so that the tree wouldn't dry up. This is how much tatabbu of athar Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma used to do. And he was who? According to Ibn Kathir, for 60 years, he was the mufti of the Muslims 
and people from all over the Muslim lands in his time would come to him for fatwa. His, his rank in terms of uh, fiqh and understanding of the Quran and the Sunnah, that for 60 years he gave fatwa. Ibn Kasir mentions a narration that Ibn Kasir says this is a sahih sound narration that the Holy Prophet والسلام, referred to Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma and said, Inna Abdullah rajulun salihun. That Abdullah ibn Umar is a rajulun salihun. Okay, one thing here. After this, what I want to mention also Imam Zahabi. Uh, has mentioned in his seer, uh, Hafiz Abu Nu'aym, great Hafiz from the Hufazul Hadith, Ibn Abi Shaybah, numerous muhaddisun have mentioned that he, Abdullah Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma used to do so much of this tatabbu, whenever on a journey, praying where Holy Prophet alayhi salatu was salam, this athar of the Holy Prophet alayhi salatu was salam, that people who saw him would think, Annahu Majnoon. Or in some narrations, what is men mentioned is Anna Behi shay Shay'an, referring that uh, uh, he's, he, he's, he's insane, that so much he's doing this, that people who would see him suddenly doing these things, that's what would come to their mind. This was his love, honoring. And nisbah with the Holy Prophet alayhi salatu was salam. Right. When we come to Sahih Bukhari, in Sahih Bukhari, now remember these things that Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma used to do. Oh, no one out of the Salaf criticized Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma for doing this. What are you doing? No one criticized. Rather, all of the muhaddisun who mentioned uh, 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 a hadith relating to this or written biographies of Abdullah ibn Umar, they mentioned this as from amongst the virtues of Abdullah ibn Umar. From amongst the virtues of Abdullah ibn Umar. Right. In Sahih Bukhari, there's a chapter, Kitabu Salat. In Kitabu Salat, there's a subheading in the book of Salat, there's a chapter, Babul Masajidil Lati Ala Turukil Madina. The chapter about the mosques that are on the Turukul Madina, on the roads, on the paths of Madina Munawwara. Wal Mawadi, and those places, Allati Salla Fihan Nabiyo Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Not just the mosques, even those places where Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has performed Salat. In this chapter, there's about nine, ten ahadith Imam Bukhari mentions, and they're all relating to Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma praying in the places where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa prayed. And there's narrations of ahadith where in Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma's time, uh, there was a place where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, offered Salat, it was just outside a mosque that had been built afterward there. And Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma wouldn't pray inside the mosque. He would go out, outside the mosque, and then pray in the exact spot where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, offered his Salat. Right. Imam Bukhari mentions all of this. Now, firstly understand, Imam Bukhari mentioned these are hadith of Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, and then he's called the chapter what? The places where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam offered his salat. In front of me is Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani's commentary on Sahih Bukhari. What did Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, what conclusions did Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani come to? What conclusions did all of the muhad great muhaddisun come to when it came to these ahadith? There's a lot, but I'll just read one line that will suffice. After commenting on the Rijal and the narrators of this hadith,
and mentioning that Abdullah ibn Umar kana yata barraku bitilkal amakin. That Abdullah ibn Umar he used to gain baraka tabar yat yat kana yata barraku uses the word tabarruk ibn Hajar al Iskalan. All muhaddisun, all these commentators, Nawawi, uh, ibn Hajar al Iskalani, these great commentators, they all believed in tabarruk. There's no doubt about this. Just people who haven't studied their works come to these wrong conclusions because they're listening to too much things by people who are not well versed in the books and they're trying to preach the deen. They've heard some things and then they start preaching. Deen should be taught by people who have studied the deen and studied the text. So, Abdullah ibn Umar, he used to gain baraka from these amak in these places. And then, at the end of his commentary of these ahadith, he writes several tambihat. The third tambih, now these are the words, orifa min sani ibn umara istihbabu tatabbu e athar in nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa tabarruk biha. This is Ibn Hajar al Asqalani's conclusion. What sort of hukam do we get ruling from this act, Sani, from the act of Abdullah ibn Umar? He says the ruling is that doing tatabbo, pursuing the athar of the Holy Prophet والسلام, and gaining baraka from them, is, this is mustahab. In our deen, this is what? Mustahab. And not only this, in this commentary he also writes, before this chapter there is a hadith about Itban ibn Malik where he invited the Holy Prophet والسلام, to come to his house and pray and he made that place his own musalla, he couldn't, uh, he was partially blind. It's a long hadith, I'll mention it some other time. But referring to that he says, that hadith, but he mentions it in this uh, commentary of these ahadith, he says, that is what Hujjatun fit tabarroke be athari salihin. It's what? Clear proof, hujja, of doing tabarruk not only with the atharun nabi, but be athari salihin. That gaining baraka from the athar of the righteous people also. This, what I'm mentioning, this has been the predominant view of the vast majority of scholars, of muhaddisun, of fuqaha, of mutakallimun, vast majority of scholars, this has been their opinion. Then, in the 7th century Hijri, comes Ibn Taymiyyah, with a bid'ah, bid'ah innovation. What did Ibn Taymiyyah now, I've explained to you, these muhaddis, musun, these scholars, these great aima, they've come to this conclusion. He was a great sahabi. Huh? This is what we learn from his act. What conclusions did Ibn Taymiyyah come to? This is what I want to explain to you. So, Ibn Taymiyyah, in his work, Iqtida'us Sirat al-Mustaqim, on page 278 of the second part. Huh? There's two parts in this one volume. In the second part, page 278, he says. Now, I'm going to, this whole one, two paragraph, explain both of them. So no one thinks that I'm reading out of context, I've picked something out or something. You can get the book and refer to it yourself. Ibn Taymiyyah says, that Amma Kasdu Salate fi Tilkal Bika Allati Salla fiha ittifakan Fahaza Lam Yunkal An Ghay Ribni Omara Minas Sahaba. First thing he says that making an intention of prayer, going to specific place, places where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam prayed, ittifakan, the Holy Prophet alayhi salatu was salam prayed, he was on a journey. On, and then the time of Salat came and he prayed in that place. Now going to those places with the intention of praying there, Ibn Taymiyyah, he says, Lam yunqal. This has not been narrated from other 
than Abdullah ibn Umar from amongst the Sahaba. No other Sahabi used, it's not been narrated. Right. Let me just stop here. It's not been narrated. Okay. So if it's not been narrated, is that a evidence that it didn't happen? Firstly, something that's not narrated is not an evidence that it didn't occur. Rather, there are evidences that indicate that others used to do this, but this tashaddud, this strictness that Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala an used to do, this no one else used to do. This was mashhoor amongst the Sahaba, known amongst the Sahaba. The way Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala an is so strict in observing this act, no other one, but they others used to do. For example, it's mentioned uh, a statement of Sayyida Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, which is mentioned in Fathul Bari. It's mentioned by Ibn Sa'ad in his tabaqat, and these are the words of Ummul Mu'mineen Sayyida Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. Ma kana ahadun yattabi'u athara nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi manazilihi kama kana yattabi'uhu ibn Umar. That no one used to do pursuing, doing this tatabbu or ittaba of the athar of Holy Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam. No one used to, uh, fi manazilihi, in all the places where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had descended from, for example, on a journey from his uh, riding uh, animal descended to offer salat in those manazil, those places. No one used to do tatabbu of those asar of the Holy Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, the way Ibn Umar used to do tatabbu. Meaning what? Others used to do it. The others used to do it, but no one used to do it as much as him. This is indication huh, that others also used to do it. Anyway, coming back to Ibn Taymiyyah. So he says, no one used to do this. It's not narrated from Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali radiallahu ta'ala, Anhum, and all of the Muhajirun Ansar, that when they used to travel, they used to do this, not narrated from anyone. And if it was Mustahab, everyone would have been doing it. These are his own uh, introductory statement before he makes that grave mistake, that no one before him made. So he mentions all of this. Immediately after this, context is what? Going to those specific places. This sort of tahari, that pursuing, making effort for those specific places, this was not the way of the Khulafa Rashidin. Laysa min sunnatil khulafa ir rashidin. Then Ibn Taymiyyah, these are his words. Make note of this. This is exactly what he has said. Bal hoa mim mab to de a. This is from innovated actions. This is from what? From bid'a. Now, brothers and sisters, you can come a hundred times and try and defend and say, Ibn Taymiyyah did not say Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma is a mubtade. He said those actions are bid'a. He's a human. Ibn Taymiyyah is a human. He's not an angel. This mistake happened and accept it. Those actions are bid'a, but he didn't call Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma a bid'ati or a mubtade. He called what Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma was doing mim mabtode from actions of bid'a. So anyone who does actions of bid'a is what? Mubtade. He made a mistake. Accept it. Don't be so stubborn that Ibn Taymiyyah can't make a mistake. He made a mistake. Accept it. Not only this mistake, he goes further and he says these things of doing tatabu of athar, this is what? Zari'atun ila shirk billah. This is a means which leads to doing shirk in Allah wa ta'ala. So, attributes bid'a to Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma and he comes to the conclusion that the act of Abdullah ibn Umar 
if you follow that, you're, going, you're, you're, you're on the path to shirk. Mistake. Now my question is, this statement of Ibn Taymiyyah, prove this conclusion from the Salaf. Those people who follow the Salaf, their Imam is attacking the Salaf. Their Imam is offending the Salaf. Their Imam is showing lack of etiquette and adab towards the Salaf. And who out of the Salaf? The brother of the mother of the believers. Lack of adab. He made a mistake. Except he made a mistake. Don't try and defend him. Except that he was a human. He wasn't an angel or a prophet. He wasn't masoom. He made a mistake. It's reasons like these sorts of things. In Aqeedah that he, and in Aqeedah that he made mistakes, that his students, Zahabi, used to say, may Allah forgive him. We do dua, Allah forgive him for his mistake. For the Masail that he said that no one before. This is from amongst those. No one out of the Salaf objected and, and said about Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma these words. They remembered this as a virtue of Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. But Ibn Taymiyyah, he came to an incorrect, invalid conclusion and only used his own aql, didn't use any nakal to come to this conclusion. The nakal he used, he mis interpreted it with his aql. And that misinterpretation or that interpretation of Ibn Taymiyyah doesn't exist in the scholars before him. I've mentioned to you, Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani says that these are proofs, the actions of Salaf are proofs for an action being mustahab. Ibn Hajar says it's mustahab, Ibn Taymiyyah says it's a bidah. Nawawi and all muhaddisun great commentators of the hadith, they all say it's mustahab, These are dal- this is a dalil, the sunni, the action of Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma is a dalil, but Ibn Taymiyyah says it's bidah and it's a means of going towards shirk. Our job, brothers and sisters, is to educate. We're not offending anyone, we're not attacking anyone, we're critically analyzing the works. And when we critically analyze the works, then we must follow the majority of great scholars. And the majority, I've said, did not come to this conclusion that Ibn Taymiyyah did. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala give us the ability to stay steadfast on the true aqeedah that we got from the Holy Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam and the sahaba kiram and the salaf. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin.